Welcome everyone to the Road to Grand Centurion. This is our fourth week. Um, so this is a found. It is not a foundational course. I, I always kind of go over what this force, course is all about to give you some context. Uh, if you maybe are just joining us uh, throughout the uh, sessions, uh, we we went over two uh, two times last year the foundational. Uh, Heritage Coaching Academy, which is really building up the foundations of your business, which is having a great listing presentation, buying presentation, your CRM, and and uh, the importance of sphere of influence, and then building that out and uh, putting in two other uh, pillars. Um, now, what we're talking about is uh, building on that foundation, and how do you take it and scale it to the next level? Uh, so we do this on Mondays, uh, 10 a.m., um, depending on the Monday, because, you know, you've got different things happening, but uh, uh, this Monday, definitely. And then I think next Monday, we're good as well, uh, will be recorded. So we're recording this and putting it on a series of um, learning journeys on our training site. Um, and then we have the Thursday scheduled one, one o'clock in person at the uh, office locations um, with your manager to, to have some accountability and talk about networking and, and learning from each other. Um, and if you attend 80% of those coaching classes, you will receive a, a nice certificate that uh, says you've taken the course. Um, so these are the courses that we have uh, been going through and then um, going on to five and six. Uh, so we took those foundational review uh, for course one. We talked about being a rainmaker and the importance, um, obviously, of your business plan and how are you going to um, make enough business to get to the next level. It's all about uh, getting the, it's it's leads from sphere of influence or leads from other sources, but it's really about relationships and being able to make it rain, which is having the pipeline of people ready. Um, and you should have that pipeline uh, starting to fill up right now because we're going to get into the spring marketplace. Um, now, how do you scale and uh, return on investment? It's about time and money. So how do you spend more quality time and, and efficient time in order to scale up your business, as well as uh, where should you be spending your money and then doubling up in order to uh, scale um, a good business plan uh, around those leads? Uh, today, we are going to go through hiring to, to scale, um, and that is the time and money section of uh, scaling and the, probably the most important to scale is getting help. Um, so we're, we're going to talk about hiring help uh, to, to get you to the next level today. Uh, the fifth is the need to feed leads, 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 feeding your pipeline. I know it's a hot topic is again, how do you just keep feeding? So we're going to go on to online leads as a source. Um, we did go over some um, uh, content with regards to scaling with um, with open houses and uh, um, and farming, for example, uh, as two different fields already. Um, but we're going to get into online leads because I know uh, that's a hot topic. And how do we really just fill that pipeline and uh, be able to feed your team as you scale up? And then let's wrap it up with a plan at the end. So um, on Thursdays, we want you to grab your gym buddy, and that is somebody will hold you accountable. So we we have your managers uh, meeting with you on Thursdays to chat about the content that we're bringing up on Mondays and uh, and, and to answer questions and to point you in the right direction. Um, so we're going to do that again on Thursday at one o'clock in uh, your offices. Um, is everyone using the Agent Success app? I think this is a great way. And we talked about making it rain and we talked about lead gen and we talked about prospecting and, and really continuously building relationships. So what the agent success app does is it gives you a lot of actions that you're able to complete throughout the week and give yourself points towards your goal for the year. Uh, it breaks it down the by week, by month, by year. And it really is a great reminder of some of the things that you could be doing in order to stay in contact with your sphere of influence and or get out there prospect. And uh, it's, I, I find it's a great accountability measure without having to specifically have a coach. Uh, you can use the app. The app also allows you to add a coach. So if you're uh, building a team or you're on a team and or if, you're, um, if you want to add one of our managers or myself as your coach, that allows us to see what prospecting you have been doing and uh, review it with you. So download the Agent Success app. So where does your road start? Some of you are below 114, some of you are above 114, some of you have uh, um, got into the Centurion level, which is amazing. That's your top producing level. Uh, and this is really where this course takes over. And last 
uh, session, we did focus on that Centurion level and uh, started to say, okay, you're at Centurion level. How do you really scale up and do 640 over 320? And of course, you're, you're utilizing your time more efficiently. Uh, you are uh, making sure to uh, time block, um, become more organized, and to scale a couple um, of your areas that you're spending some money in. So this week, um, that double Centurion level, which is 640 or above, you're, you're going to need help. Okay, so the most important thing that you're going to need to focus on now is going to be managing your business and managing people, not just yourself. Masters and Centurion, you're managing yourself, your own time, your own money. Now you're a double Centurion, you're going to start to managing other people. Some people can do that, and some people, you're going to need help with it. You're going to need to start to think about what it is you do every day and how do you transfer that ability onto somebody else. And some of the, some of that is about managing expectations because you are you and you can't expect everyone else to be like you. So we have a lot of people start teams and get frustrated very quickly, realizing that they have team members that don't do what you do. Well, that's that's kind of hard, isn't it? I mean, you are who you are and you're you're at 640. If they were at 640, they wouldn't be on your team. So, you know, how do you start scaling up and managing other people? The first component is an administrator. So today is about hiring an administrator. Although, although a lot of the same things I'm going to go over today um, can be what the process you take uh, maybe a buyer's agent through as well. But you got to start. Most people go right on to you know bring on somebody on the team that's another real estate agent because I don't have to pay them. And the reality is that very rarely works, right? You really need to hire a proper administrator that gets paid from you for the time work and take a lot of your administration off your shoulders first so you can scale up your time. So it's double centurions we're going to focus on uh, this week. And we are going to talk about hiring to scale. Um, administration first. Uh, we're going to get into disk profiling. And, a, and if any of you have done a disk profile in the past, this will be a review for you. For those that uh, haven't, um, we're going to open up your eyes to something that's pretty cool. And you can really do a lot of research on this. There's a lot of videos on this. Uh, but let's get right into it and I'll explain sort of an overview. And then I'm going to, you know, one of your homework assignments this week is really to focus on, you know, what is your personality style? What is it that you need uh, in order to um, surround yourself with that maybe covers off some weaknesses you have? Okay. So let's talk about administration. Why hire an assistant? I think I went over this a little bit. Let's really, really dive into this. It seems simple enough. The reason why you would need an administrator but a lot of people still don't get it. They get it, but they just, ah, this, you know, how much is that really going to help? It helps a ton, a ton. Um, they can help you with a wide variety of duties, freeing you up for things that you can only do, like prospecting, listing appointments, client relations. These are things that you have to do more of in order to scale your business and get more clients. Networking. Uh, when you're spending less time on administrative tasks, you have more tasks. You have more time to build additional training associated with other strategic initiatives to help you build your reputation in the industry. Um, so here are some of the responsibilities that uh, of an assistant. These are some of the things that an assistant can do for you. Your client care, so follow up, client closing gifts, birthday programs, home anniversary programs, co coordinate team events, drip campaigns, lead nurturing. So these are things that a client care person uh, or an administrator can do on the client care side of things. Uh, we always want to provide an extra level of service, but we forget sometimes. And I, I remember doing this myself. I would sell a house and I'm like, I want to get them this gift and that gift and follow up and all this. Then you get busy doing something else. And all of a sudden you look back and you're almost embarrassed to call them in the future because you forgot to drop off a gift or you forgot to have that conversation and thank them so much and ask for a referral, you know, really build out the relationship and turn your business on overdrive. You will scale up your business and double your business with just client care because you're going to get more and more referrals. Referrals are the best source, the best source of business. And that's where you're going to get it from the client care side of things. Business building. So actually building the business. So managing, enhancing social media presence, manage and promote client testimonials and websites, write and facilitate all creative for advertising, track and analyze advertising, create efficiency, provide opportunities and feedback to team members to promote sales driven goals. So when you have, um, you hire an administrator, uh, if it's just you and your admin, 
Okay. You're not, you don't have team members yet. They're still going to prov provide stats and, and, and be able to say, listen, this is where you're at. This is where you can be. Maybe we should double up here. Have those discussions and make them feel a part of your team by really analyzing your business and helping you build it. Um, manage in the administration side of things, of course, is probably where you, you, you need the most help, right? Managing team central. Now this, a lot of this stuff is team, team related. Okay. So we're going to assume that you're getting to that next level of Grand Centurion. So these are things they can do for the team, but they can do for you as well, right? So your communication, not just with team, well, team leaders, you. So communicating well with you, managing a central email, helping prepare marketing material, preparing buyer and seller listing packaging, uh, booking showings, coordinate showings, preparing CMAs, listing packages, monthly marketing meetings, analysis, analysis. Uh, follow up with client solicitors, organize team leader calendar time block accordingly, manage client database, maintaining photos, open houses, MLS websites, preparing listings, feature sheets, photography, manage update agent websites, blogs, uh, track and coordinate of inbound leads, maintaining organized listing and deal paperwork. That's a big one, by the way, obviously deal paperwork, following up on, um, on deficiencies, uh, organize and file all advertising. So these are the administration side is what people tend to, and I usually don't have to go into the details of that. Yeah, they're they're going to do the work that you shouldn't be doing. Any piece of paper that you touch or or fill in, other than explaining and having them sign a contract, should be done by your administrator. Follow up, um, you know, that's a lot of the the time that we're spending uh, inefficiently. So let's talk about hiring. Um, and it's probably the reason why a lot of people don't have administrators is because how do I hire? How do I find one? How do I get that uh, person up and ready and, and all the rest? So let's go right into how to properly hire somebody for a position. And we're going to focus on administrators. Uh, down the road, you're going to be building out team members uh, and to be pe people part of the team that are going to do certain things. Uh, it could be a buyer's agent, for example. These core values, hire slow, fire fast, and train well, even though we're going to talk to them an administrator here, this, this does relate to buyer agents as well, okay? Um, when you build out a team and an administrator is the first component, you are going to need to figure out what your core value is. What is the value that you entail in your team? And there's whole courses just on building out mission statements, vision statements, and values, but you need to go through that process to find out what is your value propositions, what is your culture that you want to have in terms of your team, even doing your own personality style and test to, to see what it is that you need, the, the strengths and weaknesses, but you need to share those common values. If that person that you're hiring isn't customer focused and customer service focused, that might not be a good value uh, not to put in place because they're chatting obviously all the time with your clients and you need to provide great service, but have common values, shared vision, passion, and energy. Uh, culture fit is key. Skills can be taught. Okay. So don't, you know, focus all, as much maybe necessarily on, um, let's say skills that, that you can teach them how to fill a FinTrack form. So if they don't have FinTrack, experience, who cares, right? Uh, and we can help on that. And I'm going to go in through a little bit more of that um, uh, further on. So core values, hire slow, fire fast. I don't know if you've heard this before, but if you've ever taken any management courses or been in a management position, you need to take your time and hire the right person for the job. If you make that mistake, trust me, the next few years are going to be tough for you. So hire slow, make sure you do it right. And then fire fast. If they're not the right fit, and you can tell in the first day, they come in late, and you know they not just late, right? But they come in maybe with a bad attitude, or they rub you the wrong way. It's like, listen, I don't know if it's going to work out, right? Fire fast. Make sure you do not continue on with them for a long period of time. So turnover is costly, energy, time, money, everything. It can really actually affect you in a negative way. So have others even interview right? Take them out for lunch, hire slow, right? Get to know them before you make a decision hundred um, percent. And then train well, make sure you invest the four to eight weeks up front, uh, intense training with your new team member, bring them up to speed on the company culture, ski kill, skills, implement ongoing learning development plans. So make sure you train them well. We can help with that, right? Part of our training program. And uh, we did a full uh, administrative uh, how to how, how to hire an admin and and train an admin program. So training your admin for you, 
We have it on video as well. We allow, um, allow we, we create a culture within our offices that if you've brought on them and they need to figure out how to fill out a FinTrack form or um, work with web forms or um, you know put a listing on the market, we will have them sit um, with our admin and have them trained through us. So we, we can provide that service for you. But I really want to go into DISC personality um, right now and talk about what DISC is. Okay. Um, if you've heard of DISC before, uh, as I have, I've taken different personality uh, traits. When you when it gets when you get into managing teams, and I'm saying teams, any work environment, uh, it's important to know what uh, sort of personality style you're dealing with, because a lot of frustrations can can come from just not measuring expectations or hiring the wrong person because you thought they were a lot like you, right? We make that mistake a lot is that, you know, oh, they were really great outgoing, so friendly, so much energy and realize you just hired an admin. That's a great salesperson. And that's all they're going to want to do is talk all day long to your clients and get nothing done in terms of administration work, right? You need to hire properly. So having a disc personality done will help determine what it is if it's a right fit. Uh, typical admins, and now let's go through it. There's D, I, S, and C, or D, I, S, and C. Um, so that's a disc. Ds are dominant, um, what called dominant personalities, right? Um, anything on the high or the top scale, so dominance and influence is high energy, okay? So this is high energy, okay? Uh, results based, they, they, they're determined, they're direct. Uh, you'll see a lot of uh, CEOs and, and uh, people that will, you know, they will go through anything to get the job done on time, right? So dominance personalities, eyes are influencers. These are people that are super social, life of the party, enthusiastic, outgoing, persuasive, right? So influencers, great salespeople, right? Um, D's get things done. Influencers, they're the life of the party, right? And uh, a lot of real estate agents that are successful, but are super unorganized, are high eyes, okay? Then we have the C, oh, sorry, go S first. So we'll go with the S, is steadiness, thoughtful, supportive, patient. You know, they're going to, they're going to really care. They're caring, okay? And then you have the C at the end here, which is precise analytical details, your, your accountants, uh, your teachers. Um, and, and so lower energy, but very organized. And, um, and they'll, they'll follow through, but it might take a little bit longer to do, okay? And if you look at an administrative assistant, behavioral qualities, high S, okay? Second C, next I, and fourth D, right? So the best personality fits for the uh, assistance uh, role will be moderately low D with mid-range I. They're deliberate and controlled on how they deal with people um, and problems. They prefer to be organized in their approach. High S leads to disciplined behavior and they love to uh, follow and set rules, regulations due to their high, high C. So if you hire, um, I always see a C as compliance. Compliance is second, steady, careful, uh, making sure things are done correctly. These are typical in administrative assistance. So th that, um, and if you're hiring D's and I's, essentially you're hiring salespeople and uh, it's probably, I mean, your, your buyer agents and, and some of your, um, some of the people you hire for your team may have D and I. Uh, you may hire some S and C's too. We do have, by the way, this, just because I'm saying high uh, DIs are, are good salespeople, good real estate agents, it's not necessarily true, right? Um, that's just the personality style of those influencers, of people that are you know, doing lots of video and love to be in front of people. The S and Cs can be great agents too, right? It's just they're more detailed oriented. So they're going to do things like farming really well and their accounting's really well, and they'll never be behind in their taxes and they'll be able to scale their money up very quickly because they have a business disciplined in order to make sure that every open house gets a certain treatment. They do the research, they, they the, the knowledge. So you can be very high in essence and be a great agent. Okay. But you're, you're typically going to need somebody to maybe do your social media and some, some video stuff and all the rest on the DNA eyes. So it's interesting. And, and if you go through the process of taking this disc assessment, I think you'll start to realize what some of your strengths are and some of your weaknesses and start to be able to plug in where you're missing out on. So go to tonyrobbins.com uh, forward slash disc 
Uh, it's about the only place I know to get a good di disc assessment done at no charge, right? They actually charge a lot to do disc assessments and it's like 36 pages and they go into really deep detail if you pay for it. But if you do a free one, you'll find out where your DISC is and you'll be able to do some more further research as to what that means. And it, they'll give you a good overview. So this gives you a good overview. And if you ever hiring an, an administrator, one of their homework assignments before they come for the second interview is like, listen, we're going to have you come in for a second interview. We, we think you're, you might be a, a right fit for the team, but I want you to do a disc assessment before you come in. I'll print it off and we can chat about it when you're here. So they'll take the assessment, they'll answer the questions. And if they fit the bill and they answer the questions right, and you've done your references and you've done all the things that I'm going to go through and they're the right fit, that could be a good hire, right? So um, that's DISC. And what I, you know, one of the homeworks that uh, assignments that I think you should go through is do this DISC assessment and bring it on Thursday and let's talk about different personality styles and what you're, I mean, and it, you can relate this to a lot of things, not just hiring. This can be literally, uh, actually, we have um, a, a version of DISC. If you go to uh, Homes by Heritage and go to uh, YC21, like uh, careers, there is a take the test and they take a different uh, personality um, assessment and it goes through and what they do is relate it to how, how you would be as a real estate agent. And they'll go through, you know, what if you're high and I, you should be getting out in front of people and everything, but you'll need a little bit of help over here. And in, in the, you know, they'll tell you all about how it relates to real estate. So that's another one you can do. So if you want to, you know, this is great for hiring admin. Uh, also, if you go to the, uh, the y21.ca or our homes by heritage site and go to careers, you'll see that other, uh, assessment. So I think they're fun to take too. Um, our resources for hiring a, an administrator can be found on our drive. So if you go to our Google drive, go to remarketer, click on drive. Um, you can type in it's under teams. Um, I have a, a resource section under the teams folder that's called admin. And you'll have your assistant job responsibilities that I went over earlier, as well as a, um, we'll leave, uh, I think in there as well, there's um, how to, um, and I'll show you uh, what to put in terms of a, um, an ad together to hire an administrator and then questions to ask. And I'll show you some of the stuff right now. Um, so that's in the admin folder in the resource section of the team file uh, on, on, uh, on the Google Drive. And then we do have the series of videos currently on YouTube, um, and that's under Heritage Admin Training uh, that has nine videos, and we'll take your admin right through starting off about hiring training, setting up communication with your admin, and then having the min go through and actually set up your websites and CRM and marketing center and all the rest of it. So we teach them how to engage with our systems in order to get you up and going. Uh, here's the example of the... Um, um, the uh, admin job post. So the title, um, and this is again in the drive. So if you need to find this, it's in the drive. The primary responsibilities of an admin. So we uh, go through that, the, the support team leader, database management. So all the different responsibilities. And then what should the candidate have? Now this says real estate license or experience, not necessarily, uh, not necessary but definitely an asset. So if maybe they were an admin for a lawyer or something in the past, that's fine. Um, there's more training that's going to need to have, have to happen. Taking somebody that's either had their license or has their license. That's a big question I get asked. Do I do a licensed assistant or non-licensed assistant? And for the first assistant that you, you, you bring on, I suggest non-licensed. Okay. Some people will do licensed because it allows you, them to go out and maybe show a property or two and stuff. And that kind of gets but usually licensed assistants won't necessarily want to always be um, the admin and you have to make sure they have the personality style of that S and C and that they're loyal to, and just, they like to just, they just like admin stuff. So, and then if that's the case and they have their license to bonus, but um, just be careful with people with licenses because they tend to not, again, they'll may, may want to get into sales, ask them, and then you create a buyer's agent. You have to hire a new assistant, but yeah, I don't know. It can be a benefit. It just has to be the right uh, situation. Um, here is an example of just the uh, the write up, um, and if it's you know if you're ideal for the right position, um, this is our commitment that you need to make, et cetera, et cetera. So this is this is an example of a job, uh, job admin post in that uh, Google Drive. 
Uh, five key factors when hiring. Uh, make sure that um, that uh, job stability is important to them. Um, do having their disk profile, you'll find out which ones are typically more um, resistant to change. They kind of just like doing the same thing all the time. Um, so you're going to ask certain questions like how many jobs have they had? Um, you know, if they've been in five positions in the last two years, chances are they're not going to stick around. You know, why wasn't the last five jobs suitable for them? Location, make sure that they live near, nearby, too far away. It just doesn't seem to work. Some people have said, should I hire an assistant that is even overseas and it's cheaper because I can hire somebody to do that's That's a tough one. I've never seen anybody really have any success with that. Um, I could be proven wrong if it's certain things you need done, like technical stuff with websites and stuff. But, you know, I would say typically you want the location to be close. Hobbies, interests, you need to know a little bit about them. Professionalism and experience, of course, comes uh, the uh, you know key factor, and then your education. You know, um, these are things when hiring you you got to take into a, a consideration if they if they're highly educated in the position that you're hiring for in the admin role, and they've done it in the past, they know what they're getting into, and they're going to be happy doing it because that's what they enjoy. Um, as well as their knowledge, if they're coming in uh, working for another agent in the past. They're already, you know, maybe up to speed on web forms and stuff. It, it might take only a couple of weeks to get them up and going instead of the 48. Obviously, somebody with no experience in real estate whatsoever, it is going to take even longer than eight weeks. The onboarding is going to take eight weeks, but it's going to, you know, take a good year to get them up. But they may be the best employee you've ever hired because you hired on personality and their key core values rather than education. So take these all into consideration when hiring. Uh, there is a list of typical questions to ask. Now, I say typical. These are the ones that you'll go in an interview, and I'd say somebody who's not advanced in interviewing somebody will go through these set of questions and stay there. So like, what is your strength? What is your weakness? What are you passionate about? Okay, these are easier questions to answer. If you really want to put somebody on the seat and dive into um, more situational questions, you'll find that if they can't give you situations or they can't explain um, how they handled certain things that they could just say, what's my greatest strength? Oh, I'm a hard worker. Okay, well, tell me a time that you you had a, you know, you had a deadline to meet and uh, how did you overcome it? And what did you do to get it done or something like that? Then you're going to be in better position. So here's situational questions. So descriptive questions like, um, how did you uh, describe a situation where you had to deal with a client and an unreasonable request? That's always a good one. Tell me a difficult situation. What's the worst person you've ever dealt with and how did you handle it? Right. And if they tell you a story about, yeah, the person, you know, um, it was a, it was a, a tough client. They were really, you know, grouchy. And I just told them, you know what, it's better. We just, you know, go our separate ways or I yelled at them. I mean, that wasn't the right way to handle it, obviously. Um, so, Having them put into a situation is always an easier way in order to find out whether or not they really are um, customer focused or or compliant or you know describe a situation how you handled an upset client describe a situation when you went out of a way uh, for a coworker how did that impact you uh, what are your thoughts and feelings towards telephone prospecting describe a dif difficult prospect call and how you handled it describe your best uh, sale in detail these are great questions for uh, buyer agents. Uh, describe your worst sale experience. What are your long-term plan and goals? What's your interest about working with me and my team? These are examples of situational questions. Obviously go through, there's a lot of questions between this page and the last one I showed you. You know, cross out the ones that don't apply for the situation you're in, but ask the ones that do um, and put some thought into it. Most people will just come in, the person will sit down and say, well, tell me about yourself. What's your strength and weakness, weak, weaknesses and, and, and just be, you know, just to, to get to know the person. Um, make sure you put them a little bit on the hot seat and tell, you know, get them to tell you situations they were in. I think it's so important. Um, checking references. Any mistake I've ever made in my careers as a, as a manager, it comes down to, damn, I should have checked those references, <laughs> right? You think they're great. You want them to be great. I found the first perfect person for the job. Let's hire them. Okay. Got them in and everything. And, and realize that. Maybe I should have checked references. <laughs> it always goes back to that. So don't waste the time. Don't You don't want to miss out on this very important step. You will also want to make sure that you're adding uh, abiding by legal and professional standards. Checking references takes time, but it can save you money, time, headaches down the road. When you check references, ask 
the right questions. The one I always think like, one I was, would you hire the person again? If you get a pause, right? There was something wrong. <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah, if you know, if you're looking for a good salesperson, they're great at sales. Like, okay, so they didn't show up on time, they didn't complete their tasks, they were difficult and had an attitude, but yeah, they were great at sales. <laughs> so, you know, you just you have to ask certain questions, right? Uh, would you recommend this pers uh, person and why? Uh, did they get along with everybody? Or why did they leave, right? Was the uh, individual ever promoted? And just so you know, from a legal perspective, if the person answers all these questions and tells you all the different things that, all about them, um, it actually puts them in, a, in an awkward position for, you're not, from a legal perspective, you have to be careful how you answer these questions. If anybody ever calls you for an interview, or sorry, for a reference. I was always taught when somebody calls you for a reference, it's on the other side, say, I can I can only confirm and deny the information the other person provided, right? So you have to change the way they word it. So, um, you know, they said they were promoted into this position. Was that correct? I can confirm that, yes. Were they, did this individual get along with other, well, they you had to have to ask, you know, uh, they say they got along with all the people at work. I can't confirm that, right? So you you can only confirm and deny, which is it was it was a, a little thing that somebody taught me once, and I was really interested in why is that? Well, because from a legal perspective, you can only confirm and deny when doing references. You can't say, oh my God, they did this and they did that. Like, okay, you just affected them getting a job, and they can come back and actually sue you for not getting that position because you told stories that weren't necessarily true. They'll say it wasn't true. Um, and that uh, you told them things that were private information and stuff. It was crazy. But when you track references, yeah, you're going to ask these questions because you need to know, right? Um, we have contracts. Um, I'm not, you should always get your contracts looked over by your own lawyer, okay? But we want to provide you with um, some basic templates. So we have a, a, a boilerplate independent contractor agreement. And this is where I want to spend a little bit of time cautioning you. When it comes to hiring an administrator, um, you have to decide if you're putting them on an, an employee basic basis or an independent contractor basis. Okay. And there's different legal requirements for both. Most, we are independent contractors as real estate agents because we have our own car, we're provided our, we're, 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 we're have our own computers, we have our own workspaces, we'd have to pay for our work. There's a bunch of things that you have to go through in order to, uh, to make sure that you are an independent contractor and it needs to be documented. So that's why we have independent contractors with all of our agents. Well, if you hire an administrator and you tell them that they have to work between nine and five and come to the office and uh, you, they're an employee. They are an employee. Even if you sign them to an independent contractor agreement, from independent in, from uh, an employment standards standpoint, they're an employee. So even if you give them paper for your printer, right? Even if you give them the pens that they write with, right? If you tell them you you have to work between any time periods and you're providing them anything, they're an employee. Now, you don't necessarily want them to be an employee because if you call them at eight o'clock at night, you need them to type an offer. Employees aren't, you're not allowed to ask that as an employment standards, a new rule with employment standards. So you want to be a true independent contractor. Okay. So you can ask them to do things and they bill you for their time. So at 10 o'clock at night, write an offer. They're an independent contractor. They invoice you for their time. You do not give them a computer. You do not provide them with paperwork, paper or anything. If there's anything that you need to provide them with, they would have to buy it from you, rent it from you. Okay, so you get into a lot of different legal things. And um, I'm just giving you an overview of the things that you need to look into when you bring on somebody. Okay, so uh, again, I'm not a lawyer. You really should look into your responsibilities, okay, as a person who is contracting somebody to do work. We suggest an independent contractor because from an administrative standpoint, uh, for the most of you that are doing a lot of business, you're going to need um, to pull on their time effectively when you need them. Okay. So when you bring them on, yes, they have to provide their own computers, pens, laptops, 
Um, even the workspace that you give them, that's they can come and use it, but that's not their office, right? So um, you have to be careful, and that's going to help you guys with uh, with uh, independent contractor agreements. Okay, that's a, one of the questions we we talk about a lot. Um, is you know, and in the end, I think it's so important that as much as you have a contract and you need to treat them well. Okay, so in saying that, when you bring on somebody, you really want to create an environment and roll out the red carpet with their onboarding. So you've hired them, you've signed them to a contract, first day on the, on, on the job, right? Be prepared, have workbooks ready for them, have their paper ready for like the training that you're going to put them through. So I would have a branded company package. Now this is, again, this is what we did for teams, but you should have a presentation for them that this is how I'm going to run my team. What is our value proposition? What's the marketing tools? Um, if you don't, and this is the first time you bring on an admin, this is what they actually are going to be um, doing for you at first is actually providing that, actually building that. So sit down with them and go through and say, this is what I like and kind of go through on the first day. This is what I like you to start building for me, right? So how are you going to communicate with them? Um, when are you going to sit down and go through reviews and be really detail oriented? Um, but even while them like get a fresh um, fruit edible arrangement, for example, or flowers or, you know, welcome to the team. And um, I think it's really important to, you know, to have that relationship right up front um, that not only impresses them that you're going to provide a great work environment um, and a working relationship, but also that you're setting expectations of what you're going to want out of them. Um, so be specific as to, you know, what your training is going to entail. Let us help. There should, that we, we have a ser series of videos they can watch. There is a lot of uh, help and uh, administrative way, uh, things that they can shadow up at our front desk. Um, but really create that environment of a place that they want to come to and work out of. And if they're working out of home, that's great too. That's fine. But do an orientation, get them to meet the people around the office, the people we have an orientation that we put all our agents through, you know, ask for that up front. We'll print it off again. You guys have probably have it back in the day you were, you came on, but we have, um, we always update it, ask for it. And you should have that as part of your onboarding is our orientation. Right, because as all the people and the phone numbers and everybody that you should contact if you need help with this, 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 and this. Um, so let us help with that. So just to kind of round up, and then we'll open it up for discussion. Um, Thursday. So we always want you to bring your business plan, but do your disc profile for Thursday. Uh, we have a full resource section for how to hire and bring on administrator. Have a look at that. Um, your laptop CRM. We want to talk about profiling and what what it is you need help with. And if you haven't quite got to that point where you're at that grant, you're pushing towards double centurion level and you're still at that organizational phase, use this as an opportunity to do a disc profile on what is your strength and weaknesses and what you can work on, right? Strengths are just as important. If you are high D and I, well, then you're, you're a driver and you're an influencer. You're going out and meeting more people. You should be doing door knocking and cold calling and putting yourself in front of people, right? If your S and C is okay, let's organize yourself and let's talk about scaling up and, and, and doing a good marketing program with, uh, uh, with emails and, and CRM and, and maybe get into farming and some of the things that are more organizational and systems oriented, get those up and going. And as soon as you have those strong, then you can start putting in, okay, what on my weekend? What do I need to get help with? And that's when you're going to either hire somebody or contract somebody to do certain things for you.